this is going to be a typical like results video. Um, I'm not going to like break down the matches and tell you who won and why I thought, you know, a school a letter grade for the matches. Now this is going to be like honestly my straight thoughts on what happened at Money in the Bank. Um, I do have s some notes here on my screen, but this is more so just to keep me in line and make sure I say everything I want to say and not just go off on damn tangents because I could. But yeah, you read the title. Money in the Bank absolutely pissed me off. And I'm going to get into it. First of all, let me just start out by saying this is not like saying it was a bad show. I don't think it was a bad show. I thought the matches from Bell, like opening Bell to honestly, most of them, like the last, you know, the last five minutes or so, like opening Bell to the last five minutes were good performers did well there were great spies everyone basically got for uh, got a chance to shine it was great it was just the closing it was the closing of matches and the decisions to end, how, how to end those matches to finish this is what legitimately pissed me off so i'm just gonna kind of go and we'll see. yeah all right so like the the men's money at bank great match i thought there were spots that there needs to be in the money in the bank where especially a multi-man ladder match where it's just carnage and all that kind of stuff. I thought the men's match uh did did great in that. But at the end the decision to have Drew McIntyre win it, I thought at the time it was questionable at best. I'm like, okay, he doesn't need the briefcase he already has the blood feud of the freaking year with cm punk that the during the world heavyweight title or even a wwe title and to that i don't see how it would enhance that as much i think for this blood feud there's like no titles no prestige it's just two men who do not like each other just needs to beat the living shit out of each other until one of them cannot stand that's basically how that feud has to end. But throwing the briefcase on Drew makes sense character wise. He's lost every you know title opportunity he's had because of Punk. And so this was kind of like, as of right now, his last shot to get a guaranteed shot. Again, not what I would have gone with, but made sense in character for Drew to go for it. And the fact that he won, cool. But an hour later to sit there and cash in on a world heavyweight championship match which i thought was fine with just uh um damien and seth i thought it should have been the main event if, if i'm being honest even after that i'm not even like i'm not even upset at, at the uh the botch pin you know where damien's shoulders were clearly clearly down for three and the rest stopped at two if it was a botch hey shit happens or what i felt in the moment i'm, I'm probably a hundred percent wrong on this what i felt in the moment was that maybe damien's bell got wrong on that like reverse falcon arrow falcon arrow kind of thing maybe his bell got wrong he just or just didn't hear the three whatever happened i i'm not mad that again crap happens and it's e very easy to uh kind of move around there and get past that but to sit there and have your money to uh briefcase winner go in that match right there drew only for punk to come in and cost him which that that part i'm not mad at because it make it's in storyline it makes sense why punk would just fucking make drew lose at every possible goddamn moment but to sit there and do that and have priest pin drew on top of all that why 
fucking why the briefcase did not need to be involved for that drew and punk did their thing did not need to for this night incorporate seth and damien it could have been two separate things you want to get potential like feud back with seth and punk later do it after SummerSlam. do it after like berlin or whenever drew's is done it doesn't need to be intertwined in anything there's their feud is solid enough to where it could be one-on-one -on -one just them and Damius and Seth did, they were good on their own. But my biggest thing is why waste the fucking men's briefcase? If you're just going to make it a prop in an hour, you know, that could have gone to a way more fun winner, like a Jay Uso or LA Knight or hell, I was starting to root for Carmelo Hayes to win it. Would he have probably, would he have successfully cashed in? Probably not. Would it have been a fun ride of him just walking around a briefcase? Absolutely held yes. But to sit there and use the briefcase in such a way that I don't know. I honestly don't know right now who came out of that whole World Heavyweight Championship thing looking good. Drew didn't. He came out there cashing a briefcase, got his ass whooped by Punk, and got pinned by uh, Damien. Punk, at most, he's the same. I don't see him coming out look better. Seth just was forgotten at the end. And Damien, again, not even talking about the botch pin or whatever. That's just another thing. But he comes out looking like, basically, Punk has helped him, what, his last, his he helped him win the title, helped him defend a clash at the castle. Basically, Punk looks like he's part of ju damn Judgment Day. And on top of that, speaking of Judgment Day, to sit there and tease Finn being involved and not having him, you know, fucking be a part of anything, not even show his face when all that stuff was going down. Okay. Long story. I don't know. They're saving for SummerSlam. I don't know it. But to sit there for Finn earlier in the show to drop a line like, whatever you say, boss, but like say it menacingly, like he's going to, like, like he he said the words whatever you say balls but his eyes say i'm gonna fuck you up when you least expect it to sit there and not do anything with that in the moment it was a decision but again the money in a money in the bank briefcase your namesake of the fucking ple was wasted and it's just stupid and triple h has bought a lot of faith with the WWE hardcores, which I am, I am an IWC. I am a hardcore. I watch every damn near everything, damn thing that comes out. But that was a shit decision. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Okay. But moving on from that right now, let's get to the uh, Intercontinental Championship match. Uh, Sami Zayn beat Braun, so like straight up clean, just clean, which is I think the. Of all of the ways that could have gone, that was probably the most damaging. It, if you would have Braun win, it would le legit pop, even though Sammy was a hometown hero. It would legit pop because Braun is that dude. He's shown at NXT carrying the NXT title that he can carry gold and carry it well. So it's not like, oh, he's not ready. No, he is ready. And that would have been a crowning moment in his career beating Sami Zayn for the IC title. Even if it was in Canada, who cares? WWE has never really cared about hometown stuff <laughs> and their track record. Um, or you could have had Braun lose, but him losing weird like a, I know he's dirt cheat listed injured, but Luke with Kaiser would have made sense even just to come in and distract. He could have came in fucking distracted Braun, Sammy took advantage, one, two, three. That at least tells a story of getting to maybe a multi-man at SummerSlam or on a Raw, so it, at least including Braun back in the chase. Maybe a Sheamus, because all four of those men have had beef, uh, beef in the last, you know, couple of weeks or whatever. Those make sense. Those are an easy story to tell to get us to a, they want to do a fatal four-way for an icy tile SummerSlam, which... Those four men in a match that someone's saying would absolutely bang. But no, it's Sammy wins clean. And 
do I want to see this again? Absolutely. I would love to see Sammy versus Braun again. But how do you get there? I don't know if you guys forget. Braun has fucking beef with Adam Pierce, the GM. Pierce is not going to be like, oh, you know what? You did great, Braun. I'll give you another shot. No. He's going to have to figure out some sort of cheap trick to get a shot. Sammy beat him clean. So Sammy has absolutely no incentive to offer a shot again. Braun is basically going to have to like fucking do what he did to ricochet to Sammy in order to get, uh, maybe get a spot. You get, again, you have Lubick in, in the back. You have Sheamus in the back door. It's just there's easier ways to tell. There are easier ways to tell the continuation of this story with without a clean loss for uh, for Braun and. There, now WWE has presented itself more hurdles it needs to jump like jump over in order to justify a rematch and there's not a rematch what the hell does Braun do because all of his other really feuds with Lubick and Sheamus have been for the IC title so does Braun just get left off SummerSlam does he just kind of just fuck off for a little bit and come back later like what does he do Again, all this could have been avoided if it was a Braun win or a loss by some shenanigans. But again, another bonehead decision that was made tonight. And I'm not usually the one to sit there and be like, yeah, WWE sucks. It was a you can look at my other content, even if I don't like the win, I can sit there and somehow justify it going forward i usually am pretty positive on things going but tonight was just it was one decision after another to where it's like what the fuck is going on um the women's match i honestly good thing the women's match was great i mean there's look like a bunch of cte was developed there are all the headshots um there might be a, there has to there has to be a concussion coming out of there from somebody maybe it's always stark who just like head slam head slam head slam head slam it's like, damn girl, calm down. Um, I wanted Chelsea Green to win. I thought Chelsea Green went great as a briefcase holder, but didn't happen. Chelsea Green was the MVP of the match, absolutely no doubt. So can't be mad at that. And Tiffany Stratton makes absolutely too much sense as a briefcase holder to not have it. Um, so yeah, the right person won. I have no notes. The women's match was way better than the men's match. Not just about the result, but the carnage itself inside. I thought, again, Tiffany's your winner. It makes sense. I have, I'm not mad at that match. That match was great. That match helped save this pay-per-view for me a little bit. But at, let me get back to my notes again. I said, I have some notes here just to keep myself on track. Um... But then we have the main event, the six man tag. And why this main event, I do not know. What if it was to give fucking Solo some bloodline leader aura? Uh, uh, did it do it? I don't know. The bloodline needed uh, to stand tall. I honestly thought going into it that Team Cody, uh, which is Cody, Kevin, and Randy, I thought they would win. But bloodline would attack them afterwards and stand tall. But the bloodline got the win, so that was cool. I guess it was to justify the, the shock value of Solo pinning Cody to get them to uh, SummerSlam, which, you know, if, uh, if they, I guess they're going to do Solo versus Cody for the title at SummerSlam, which I have a video on my channel saying why that, if that's the case, that needs to main event. Please go check it out. But for them to put this match at the end, and it was, again, it was a good match. Great match. Even with, uh, what's it called? A, <laughs> even with a um, fucking uh, botched low blow. That's the word I was trying to look for. A botched low blow by Tonga Loa which is absolutely insane. Even with that, which is I was, it was hilarious. It made me laugh more than anything. Putting this at the end gave fans who have been watching for a while the perception that we were going to see a return tonight. If 
I I think it's too early for a Roman, but it could have been a Roman Reigns. I personally thought it'd been Jimmy Uso coming back, but to like even the odds. But to sit there and have this as the main event is only justifiable because Cody Rhodes is your top star and your WWE champion. It's similar to Backlash 2020 or 24, 23 in Puerto Rico when Brock Lesnar Cody Rhodes main evented and that match had no fucking business main eventing. You know, Cody's the top guy. It should have been Damian Priest and Bad Bunny main eventing. This is it. I think tonight the World Heavyweight Championship, going into the show, World Heavyweight Championship should have main evented with all that going on. But shit, even with all that botch and the fucking all that stupid shit happened with Punk and Drew, it still should have main evented. This main event, the, the six man main eventing felt like a SmackDown main event. It felt like a almost a B level uh, PLE main event, which is fine if we're talking. If we're, I'm talking about a SmackDown or like B level, like those random ones in uh, the fall to get us ready for Survivor Series and then uh, Royal Rumble. But Money in the Bank is supposed to be one of your Power Five PLEs: Royal Rumble, Mania, Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, War Games. Those are you supposed to be your cream of the crops, the ones where all the, re the returns happen or shocking moments or the great greatness, the ones that we f truly remember. And to end it with a SmackDown main event and a SmackDown ending with fucking Bloodline 2.0 and Solo standing tall. Meh. 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 Okay. Fuck. <laughs> it's, it's head scratching. That's the, the word of the night. It's head scratching like I'm doing now. You had great magic, you had great in-ring action, but the fucking endings you couldn't get right. Now, again, Triple H has been booking great. He's been, uh, what's it called? Telling great stories. And, you, and those of us who have been watching can see their point A or point B and figure out what the end is. And how we get there. Even if we don't like certain points in the story, we can kind of see the end. That's just like how myself and other creators that I watch can get there. I don't know what you, uh, what tonight did to further a, a lot of the stories. The Drew Punk thing, maybe at the end where the press conference where uh, Drew went shirtless into the post show and attacked Adam Pierce. Again, go uh, if you want to see that, go look on my extra Reddit. It's there. Um, maybe that. Uh, sort of forward in some way, but honestly, I don't see how the Seth Damien thing is over before it starts. Uh, Damien and Judgment Day did not get forwarded. Really, you had a shot to forward it with the Finn stuff. He kind of just gave a raw placeholder. Um, Sammy and Braun. Look, it feels like it got stopped before it got started. Um, the, again, women's money in bank, that TV is TV time. You do that, that that's great. And again, no problems about that match, but the men's bank holder always has a story to tell throughout the year. And especially when we had the past three years of like, or two ish years of Roman being a champ where there was not the, we knew like on Austin theory did not have a, a shot at dethroning. Damien, mm, maybe, but with Cody and Damien, Damien now, eventually Guther just reading the tea leaves, a briefcase cash, it would have been great, but you can't tell a story now because you wasted a fucking briefcase. And there's not many people, which is the my overarching thing. There's not many people or situations that came out looking better after tonight. There's a whole heap of them that came out looking worse. And you never want that in a PLE, a top like power five PLE at that. You never want people coming out, your stars looking worse. And a lot did. And it will be fixed. It's WWE had 
the pro wrestling in general can fix about almost every damn thing. It will be fixed. It will be made right. But here in the moment, I'm recording uh, a little inside baseball about two hours after a show because I, I had to do dishes. And sober up a little bit. But um, to sit th in this moment right now, I don't feel like we can get there without jumping through some logical hoops more so than usual. And I shouldn't feel that after a PLE, an international power fight one. I should be like, oh, that was great. I can't wait till Monday to see what's next and see the cool matches and see who else steps up. Now I can't wait till Monday and Friday to see what the fuck they're going to say. What the fuck are they going to do to justify and on John Cena announced it. Oh, I didn't even get to that. Again, I have no problem with this. John Cena announced in 2025 his last in-ring year. Kudos to him. If I was booking a damn territory, he would get reign number 17. It will break that old farts, Ric Flair's record. A little pervert. Um, yeah. But again, I'm cool with that. John Cena made, uh, doing a tour is going to be awesome. But out of this show, I feel like not only did not not only did WWE not put his best foot forward, it had two left feet. And we're the next steps are going to need need, need the next steps are going to be needed to kind of retcon a lot of this instead of just moving the story forward. And we should not be saying that right now about money in the bank. It should be fun. It should be like, oh, did you see this spot? Did you see that spot? But no, it's what a fucking waste of a briefcase and <sighs> fuck. Just just fuck. All right. That's it. I'm done. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead, like and subscribe. I promise you the other videos will be more cheerful, more insightful. But this one, it was I just had some thoughts. I want to get get them out. But Socials, it's heartfelt right now. Just heartfelt. Catch you in the next one. Peace.